I'm Ellie Kohanim. I am so thrilled to be here with you tonight with two of the gentlemen who have made the Museum of the History of Polish Jewry come alive, Mr. Viktor Markowicz and Mr. Sigmund Rolat, who are here with us this evening. Mr. Markowicz, um, tell me a little bit about, we know it was a historic occasion, the opening of the museum, but can you share with our audiences exactly why? Well, it's one of the biggest museum, Jewish museum in Poland, uh, in the world. Uh, we want kind of uh, create a triangle between Israel, Poland, and United States. Uh, United States has a Holocaust Museum. Uh, there is a Yad Vashem in Israel, and now we have this huge and wonderful museum in Poland. Mr. Rolat. You were a founder of this museum, and I know that you've dedicated much of your life to bringing attention to um, the, the renaissance of Polish Jewry. Can you tell us a little bit about what, what we would find if we went to the museum today? Well, the museum, we call it the Museum of Life, as distinguished from all the many museums of the Holocaust. That is not to say that Holocaust is not shown there because it was the defining chapter of our very long thousand year history in Poland. And uh, for me, it was very important that when the youngsters from, from the United States got to Israel and on the way to Israel stop at Poland. And when they see really on the way, what do they see? They see almost exclusively the death camps, the German death camps. They do not really see where Jews lived for a thousand years, where so much of our Jewish tradition, where the Talmud was compiled in the 16th century in Krakow, where what we call Hasidism, where we call what we call the all the great Sadikim. All of that, the tradition, it all actually was born in Poland. We could say that Hollywood was born in Poland, because after all, Metro Goldwyn Mayer, both Goldwyn Mayer, Kohn of Columbia Pictures, the Warner Brothers, all three, they were all Polish Jews. But maybe as importantly, or maybe not maybe definitely more importantly Israel was born in Poland every single president was either born in Poland or his parents were born in Poland similarly with the prime ministers the uh, the what, what we call the Polish culture has a great great input of Jewish culture and uh, this is something which I think our our kids should know about, but as importantly, the young Polish kids should also know that the great poems, the literature, every Polish child, when he is six, seven years old, learns a beautiful poem, Lokomotiva, by one of the greatest Polish poems, uh, poets, Julian Tuvin. He was Jewish. So were many others, like Brzechwa, like uh, Swanimski and so on. So all of this is very, very important to know. And finally, a very beautiful project came to be. And uh, Victor was actually the first of us three who actually gave the most important first money for it. He was the first to find out, the first to say, yes, this is something which should actually happen. It took many years and we had good partners. It's important to mention here that the Polish government is very much our partner in this enterprise. Polish government gave the land, they gave the seed money, they built the museum. Every penny of the building was borne by the Polish government. By the same token, every penny for the exhibition, and that's about $45 million, was, was either given 
collected from the Jewish diaspora. That is very important and Victor will, will tell you even much more about how his children, his daughter who was present for example now at the opening, how important it was for us to see our children, my grandchildren, to be present there and to see that museum through their eyes. That's really beautiful, Mr. Rolat, and I'm, and I'm really glad that you're talking about children. So, Mr. Markwick, my next question for you is, what do you want both the Jewish children who are going to go to this museum and, and the many non-Jewish children who are going to visit, what is the message that you want them to get after they walk through the halls of the museum? Uh, I think for the American Jews, the message is yes, we have uh, roots and we had our fathers and grandfather had a wonderful life there. Uh, not always wonderful, obviously, I'm not talking about Holocaust. I'm talking about times before the Holocaust. Uh, the same thing applies to Israeli children who have to understand that their parents and grandfather have their own culture and this culture cannot be forgotten. Uh, I, it's also very important for the Polish children and youth to understand how important was Jewish community in the development of Polish culture and Polish tradition. I think it's a, it's a beautiful thing for all of us to know our heritage and where we come from, and hopefully it'll guide our children into the future and, and where they're going to go next. Um, Mr. Rolat, what, what else is going on in Europe and, and specifically in Poland that you find inspirational? Because again, I know you've invested a lot of your personal energy in, in the Polish-Jewish connection. Well, it's important to point out that, uh, for example, the Krakow Festival, which uh, lasts seven, eight days, starts at the end of June into July, is easily the biggest Jewish festival in the world. But it's not the only such festival. We also have a similar festival, the Isaac Bashevis Singer Festival in Warsaw at the end of August. We have another one in Wroclaw, still another in Kazimierz Dolny. So you see, there is, we are witnessing today a wonderful Jewish Renaissance. And what would be interesting to point out that, for example, at the Krakow Festival, during that last evening at Ulica Szeroka in Kazimierz, you have easily 15, 20,000 young people. If you look to the left, you see that great stage where all the acts of the previous week are being reprised, the klezmers, the cantors, the dancers, and so on. When you look to your right, you have those young people and it's interesting to see how they dance, how they sing, how they participate, how they enjoy themselves. And this is 97, 98% Polish Catholics coming from all over Poland to be at that festival. And what is also interesting to point out is that if you are there, and I've been there every year now for a number of years, Victor was present there, our children are sometimes there, it's amazing to think that if such a festival were held today, say in Paris, in Brussels, in Amsterdam, you would need a battalion of police to guard against. I can promise you, I think Victor you will agree with me, we feel perfectly safe. There's no police to be seen. That is very important, very, very important. So, Mr. Rolat, what you're saying is that today Poland is a country where thousands of people can gather together in the public square and celebrate Jewish culture. And unfortunately, in many other European capitals, whether it's France or London or elsewhere, that can't happen that today. Not, that is not to be. Uh, three weeks ago, we witnessed the opening of our museum. Thousands of people, magnificent, magnificent reception for the Israeli president who spent their two days and the Polish president and thousands of people during the opening in the evening when there was a world-class, beautiful, beautiful uh, a show, a light show and so on. 
and uh, everybody, you know, I've had a number of guests, and I can tell you, I have yet to hear one negative comment about that reception and about and about what they've seen there and what a wonderful time everybody had. And, and it is very interesting in Poland, uh, all political parties, from the far left to the left, left center, right center, they all supported museum. And we have great reviews from every newspaper in Poland, even the most extreme newspapers, uh, tabloids on the right, uh, we didn't have one bad review, as Zygmunt said, about the museum. That's, it's really and truly heartening to know that there is somewhere in Europe where there is a reinvigoration of Jewish life. So, gentlemen, I, I'm curious, what are the plans for bringing young people to the museum? And how, 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 are, how can we visit? And is there, is there a virtual way? How do we do this? Oh, there is a virtual way, but I don't want you to depend on the virtual way. Uh, you can actually visit the museum, and there is a pretty good tour of galleries on the website of the museum website. But obviously, it doesn't replace your personal visit there. I have, I have actually done that. I have seen the museum through the eyes of the children. You see, a few months ago, I have brought the graduating class of my grandson from uh, New Jersey, from the Schechter School. I've invited the whole graduating class of the middle school with the principal, with the teachers and so on. And I can tell you, it was one of the most happy days in my life when I could see how they've enjoyed and how they've actually learned so much during that time. The, the cheap we were together in Chensokova when Lorat have donated the, the monument for the memory of the thousands of Chensokova Jews who perished, unfortunately, in the Holocaust. He made it. I was in Chensokova in the labor camp called Hasak. Hasak. There were five camps in Chensokova. One of them, I, I, uh, was, I was in I was age in, of seven, seven and a I half. I was in the other one. He was in, in one Hasak, I was in Hasak Pelzeri. But, but what I wanted you to remember, we talked about the museum. The museum in, 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 War, in Warsaw, and it was a very, very rainy day. And it was during that, it was actually the, the foundation was being laid at that time. The president of Poland at that time, the one who was killed Lech in the Kaczynski. accident, Lech Kaczynski, he at that time summed up all of our museum in one beautiful sentence. This is what he said. There is no history of Poland without Polish Jews. And this, and this wonderful rabbi at that time in the rain with the umbrella. It was, it was really one of the most, one of the most exalting, one of the most beautiful speeches I've ever heard and all of the thousands and thousands of people because he used the rain as the his speech. He talked about the heaven is crying. crying. And Crap. really this was such an effective, beautiful speech. Heaven is crying for the destiny of a, a Polish Jewry. Rabbi Lau, I, I have to tell you, on behalf of our audience on Jewish Broadcasting Service, yes. it is really an honor to have you with us Thank tonight. You. Rabbi Lau, I read your book and I know your uh -huh. story, that as a child you survived the Holocaust and that you had an older brother who was watching over you. Yes. Um, for the children who, who may be watching us, what is the message that you have for both the Jewish and non-Jewish children who are watching us today? I want them to know that we have to do all the efforts in order that such an horror event like Holocaust will never reappear and ever against any any nation in the, in the, the future. We have to preserve the past in order to promise the future that will be a future of friendship, of brotherhood, of understanding, of love. Have I thank you.